I'm Ines, I'm the co-founder of Female Entrepreneurs Worldwide. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be interviewing two of our dearest members, Fiona and Sarah Zwang. Fiona was one of the sponsors of the very first FEW event in Hong Kong over five years ago now. And Sarah, you were part of the committee member of our annual conference, Female Entrepreneurs Day. So we're very thankful for having you and see you grow as well. Um, and today, uh, I would love you know, to share with our audience, for people who might not know about you, a little bit more about this beautiful showroom and your brand. Uh, welcome to our showroom, Ines. And then, as you can see that, we, ha we have all our collections here. This, uh, this is our showroom in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. We founded our brand three years ago. It's called Sarah Drawn Jewelry. And then, uh, apart from Hong Kong, we're also selling our products in different countries, such as London and also Japan and China. So basically, um, when we took over the family business, Fiona was in charge of the business side, whereas I was in charge of design and marketing. Mm -hmm. And over time, I felt that the things that I designed was a bit of a mismatch compared to our family business, which was very traditional. So three years ago, we decided to start a brand that really expresses my des design philosophy. Mm -hmm. And we focus on designing jewelry that can be transformed into multiple styles to suit modern women's very busy lifestyles. Yeah, I must say it's really stunning, stunning designs. I'm quite lucky to wear some today. Um, so we wanted to invite you both to our, our vlog because we found that you had a very interesting dynamic, obviously being sisters, but also running a business together. How it feels to run a business <laughs> together. So Sarah is actually one of the most talented and interesting person that I've known in my life. Life. We're like complete opposite of each other. She's very mature, very, very smart and well organized. I'm not. <laughs> she's, I think she's like superwoman. She's invincible. She can do anything. She never feels tired. I feel like, yeah, you have just very different personalities, but which are very complementary, right? And it's so important in business. Could you tell us maybe what you've observed, like um, what Sarah does maybe that inspired you actually and, and how you, you, you work together. Okay. Actually today I would like to share five points that I think inspire us the most and also these are all the five points that I would like to share with, to all the female entrepreneurs out there. So first one is dream big. So ever since Sarah was little she always have different kind of dreams at different ages. For example just now I told I mentioned that about the wrapping. When she was in high school, she told me that all of a sudden she says she wants to do some rap music. She did it. I mean, she did some amazing songs with her friends and she even performed on stage at a very young age. And then when she was at college, suddenly she, one day she told me she's going to write Chinese fiction. I was like, really? You went to international schools? How could you really write a Chinese fiction? But she did. She actually finished three books and she finished, she actually published two Chinese fictions so far. So a few years ago, she told me that she wants to do, be a jewelry designer and she wants to found her own brand. And I was like, really? This is a very difficult area uh, industry because it's super competitive, especially here in Hong Kong. And she said, she, yes, she, she wants to be jewelry designer who can represent Hong Kong and I was like okay I will support you and here you are she has been doing a really great job so far so this is the first point is yeah. dream big dream so big yeah and now, whatever the dream is <laughs> now I'm wondering it. what is the next dream for Sarah <laughs> <laughs> and so the second point that I would like to mention about it is stay passionate when you start a business, it's very easy for you to feel passionate about your career. But it's actually very difficult to stay passionate because when you, you're running your business, you have to face different challenges and difficulties every day. And some challenges may let you feel that you want to give up or you, you don't have trust in yourself, you don't have interest anymore. So it's actually very hard to stay passionate. But Sarah has been really, really passionate since the beginning of this brand. And she has the same kind of passion every day. And I think that is the reason that make her successful at the first stage of her career. So it's stay passionate. And the third point I would like to talk about is um, keep learning. So when Sarah graduated from college a few years ago, actually she told me that she doesn't have a goal in her life. She doesn't know what to do. And since I, she is always good at drawing and then we are doing this uh, jewelry, so I told her, why don't you take some jewelry 
um, design courses. So she, she took my advice and then she took jewelry design courses in Hong Kong, in Italy, in Japan, in Taiwan. And after that, she, I have seen that learning makes her feel more confident about herself. She has changed from a shy and independent little girl to a very confident and independent businesswoman. And the fourth point I would like to mention is work hard. Um, she looks like a party girl, <laughs> but actually, we'll say work hard, play hard. Okay. yeah. But she's actually one of the most hardworking girl that I've known. So whenever she go, she she goes, she bring a uh, a small notebook with her, and she just keep on designing wherever she goes. And for example, like after a long vacation, after she left the airport, she would just come to the office right uh, right away. Her life is so busy every day. During our um, family gathering, she always talk about business, which annoy me sometimes. <laughs> so she always thinking about this brand, and she really, really pays a lot of effort in this brand, and she's really hardworking. I, I don't know any successful person who is not hardworking. So I think hardworking is really important. And then the five point is um, also the, the most unique point that I would like to share, it's be yourself. Because <laughs> Sarah is a very unique person and um, from these few years I've seen a lot of improvements in her but actually no matter what she is it's still the real her inside she still she, she never changes and I think that is really important when you're doing your own business because some people might change herself for the business but if you change yourself because of that, even though you're really successful, you may not be happy because that is not the real you. That is not the job or that is not the you that you want to be. So if you're running your own business and you're doing okay, I, I, my advice is trust yourself and be yourself and you will be fine. I've known you for so quite some time now as well and you definitely stay true to yourself. I'd love to have your thoughts on <laughs> the other side from your, from your eyes. I How your sister um, impacts you? My, my sister plays a very special role in my life. She's, she's a sister and at the same time I think she's like a mentor. But she's quite harsh to me and <laughs> it's, a good, well, it's a good thing because it pushes me. So the first thing that I learned from her was that um, if you don't step outside of your comfort zone, you'll never move upwards. Before I started this brand, I used to be very shy and a bit antisocial, and I would just hide in my room and work on my designs all day. I hated the idea of ha having to talk to people. And she was, she was the one that told me, if you want to start your own brand, you have to get out there, you have to build your own network, you can't just hide here. As much as I hated it, I kind of forced myself to do it. And I realized it's not as bad as I expected. And it really changed me as a person. And over time, I started to enjoy it. And I've, I've, I realized that it actually really helps my brand. So that was a very important first lesson that I learned from her. And I can tell you guys, it's true. Yes, I was so shy. <laughs> the first time I met you, yeah, I remember. Like, I really felt like you were so quiet. And, and today, well, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> so the second thing that I learned from her is that sometimes it's OK to say no. About a year ago, I was um, going through quite a stressful time. I just felt like I had so much stuff going on at the same time and I wasn't really enjoying it. I didn't have any time to myself. And then she said to me that, you know, the problem with you is that sometimes you don't know how to say no to people and then you end up taking up too many roles. But it's actually better to focus on a few tasks and outperform in all of them rather than take up a lot of responsibilities and then underperform in a lot of them. So that's very useful, I found. And then the third point is, if you want to be able to achieve work-life balance, it's actually not as hard as you think. It's all about planning ahead. I used to be pretty bad at planning. I'm more of a live for the moment kind of person. Whereas my sister, she's so well prepared. Like if you look at her calendar, it's constantly packed with different colors. It's like Lego. <laughs> she, pe she plans everything two weeks ahead and that's why she's not always, weeks. maybe a month. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why she's always like on the go. She gets things done really quickly. She doesn't waste any time. And I thought that was pretty amazing. So I learned that and 
I also started doing more planning for myself. So now at the start of each year, I'll write a six months plan for everything that I want to achieve every month. And I think it's really helpful because it kind of sets you a target. You, you give yourself a goal and it's kind of like a guideline that tells you exactly what you need to do every month. That, that's Sorry. been very helpful to my yeah. business. And I think I totally agree with you. It's all about planning and organizing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then the fourth point is that um, no problem is unsolvable. A lot of times when we were going through some difficult situations at work, I would always kind of feel like, oh my God, what should we do? Like, how are we gonna overcome this? But she would kind of just sit back and not relax, but she will keep her head clear. She, she, she'll just be like, she just doesn't say anything. And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden she'll go like, I got it. And then she'll just come up with a lot of solutions that we can work with. So I think that's really important in business because sometimes, especially when you're going through difficulties, you have to keep calm and really think about all the alternatives before you make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm sure, you know, businesses, there's days where obviously it's good and there's obviously really bad days. So in terms of your relationship, how do you handle that? Like, let's say it might not be easy to be actually sisters and run a business. So could you share a bit more on that side? Um, we always have arguments on different things, it's, but it's not like real argument. It's, uh, we are very open to discuss on every topic. So for example, sometimes she has some design and then she always let me have a look at her design and then I will comment on them. And sometimes after I comment, she get angry because she has spent such a long time to work on the design, but I was like, no, 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 no. Okay, only this one maybe one design out of 10. <laughs> she can tell you, right? Because talking to creatives and telling them that we don't like their design is tough. And also because we're sisters, she's very direct. If she was like my boss, maybe she won't be so harsh sometimes. But because we're family, so we kind of just, we don't keep secrets, so we're very direct. So sometimes it could be a little bit hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> so um, sometimes she get angry, but after a while, she, she still take my advice and then she would just, uh, based on my advice, to do some modification. I think it's about compromise. Like, I listen to her advice and she listened to my advice. And I think this doesn't only apply to a partner or a sisterhood. I think that also applies to every kind of relationship. Absolutely. Yes. Any kind of partnerships has yes. to be, um, obviously, some compromise. Because no matter what happened, we're still sisters. Mm. So sometimes I'm mad at her, sometimes she's mad at me, but it's, it's fine. Like, after a few hours, we're fine. And then also because we have the same goal, so we don't have any conflict of interest. Like we have, we have the same target, we have the same vision, so anything is unsolvable. <laughs> um, the reason why me and my sister, we work as such a great team is because we're so different from each other. So I think it's in business especially, it's really important to sometimes look at things from a different person's perspective. And a lot of times, well, when we first started, a lot of times I would get angry at her for disagreeing with me. But then I realized that was exactly what I needed. I think from a creative person's point of view, she's more like... Rational. Rational, a lot more rational and from like a consumer's point of view. And you need that balance. Thank you both for having us. I invite you all to check Sarah's Wang jewelry. It's absolutely stunning pieces. And we hope to see you on the next episode.